Hello and welcome to the Sega Nerdcast episode 32. I am Chris, the editor of Sega Nerds, and with me this week we have Graham. Hello. Andrew. Hello, everybody. And Imran Youssef. How's it going, Imran? Hello, I'm great. Thanks for having me on your show. Oh, thanks for coming on. Uh, we're really excited to get you on. We've been talking to you for a few weeks now, hoping to get you on. Uh, you just got back from a big trip uh, in Asia, which we'll talk about yes. a little bit in, in, a, in a little while, but lots of great stuff. So people who are uh, listening right now, we're going to be getting into a lot of Shinmu talk because Imran is a giant Shinmu fan uh, like ourselves. Yes. And he did some really cool stuff, saw some really awesome stuff uh, that was Shinmu related uh, when he was uh, in Asia. So definitely uh, stick with us for that. Uh, but before we get into the meat of the show, let's go around, talk about what we've been up to this week. Uh, as usual, uh, Graham, why don't you kick us off with that? Okay. Uh, oh, God, what, what have I been doing? Uh, <laughs> well, mainly been doing lots of bits of Christmas shopping, but I also treated myself to something because in the Black Friday deals there was a really awesome deal on a Nintendo 3DS. So I picked one up. Um, yeah, from Amazon. Um, and I hate this fucking thing. It's, um, <laughs> <laughs> um, what? Basically, okay, here's the thing. I've been wanting to get one of these for a while, but um, I picked it up, and I've, so I recently got the, the PS Vita as well, and I've been playing this and loving the Vita. I got the 3DS, and... Ah, I'm so disappointed with it. Um, okay, I knew obviously it wasn't going to be. I'm not talking about like basically. I'm not talking about like the power of it or the graphics or anything. I'm more, more talking about what it does and how how it, how it just works. Like the Nintendo Store, I don't think is very efficient. It's crashed on me like three times already. I've only had it like three days. Um, and also the last night, I got in, I actually got into quite a rage. I was playing on um. <laughs> Get on Shinobi, um, <laughs> which I'm going to talk about a little bit later. But um, I was playing on it. I'm really bad at Shinobi, but I didn't mind. I was really enjoying it. And then I accidentally pressed the power button on it, which is, I think, in the worst place ever. I just don't know. If, don't know if anyone doesn't, if anyone's seen a 3DS before. Ever the power button is here. Oh God, I can't get it angled up. Uh, it's basically, near any of the buttons. It's basically here, which is. It's actually, I'd I'd say it's a good place to put a start button. Basically, okay. it's just below your uh, A, B, and X and Y buttons. I accidentally pressed that, which just closed the game down without saving it or anything. <laughs> um, it I've didn't even give me a warning. I've played Pokemon <laughs> for like 17 years on my 3DS, the new one. Oh, yeah. It hasn't been out for 17 years, but I don't know. It stops time when you're playing it or something. It's just one of the revolutions. Um, and I've never had that problem. Really? Uh Man, I, li I literally, I don't know what happened. I Like, my hand slipped or something, and suddenly just went, okay, app closed. Do you want to shut down or go back to the home screen? I was like, <gasps> like, what? I just went, the oh, fuck? Oh, my God. And, yeah, I'm just annoyed. Like, um, like for example, when I got the Vita, um, I went to the, the, the first thing I did was go to the store on the Vita, and, oh, yeah, and it linked directly to my old PlayStation account that I had on my PSP, which I hadn't used for years, but it linked together, and I still had money on it, and I sort of bought some, some games and stuff. PS Vita store, even though like the Vita hasn't got the biggest games library in the world, it's got tons of stuff on it, tons of great games, tons of classic games and stuff. The 3DS store has got bug rule on it, really. I was like flicking through stuff. Yeah, it's got, it does have games on it, obviously, but I was like going through, looking at, trying to look up like, I was like, like for example, <laughs> I thought maybe it might have like the old virtual console games from the Wii, you know, like um, the Mega Drive games, the SNES games, uh, the Neo Geo stuff, which could easily run on this. And it doesn't have any of them. It's just got like the Game Gear and Game Boy stuff. And I was just like, I do like Game Gear games. I love the Game Gear. Game Gear is like my favorite handheld ever. But I was just like, man, is that is that it? And it's got yeah, the three D S games because it's a different because it's a different platform. They have to sign a different licensing agreement, which takes money, and they have to justify that like financially. So if the developer the developers are actually the onus is on them to put stuff on the virtual console. It's not Nintendo. They have well, to approach Nintendo and ask for it to be published. Well, if Okay, I can, I, can, I can sort of appreciate that, but like, for example, Sony, there are games you can download for the Vita, the PSP, the PlayStation 3, and the PlayStation 4. It's all like one mm. service. Like, there's an app, there's a game you can download, and then you can play on all those services. Um, it's and just, I'm just like, Nintendo screwed up licensing system. I, that is a good point, though. 
yeah, I was just like, that's that's one of the things. I was like, what the what the smeg? Um, <sighs> yeah, and I was just, and also like most of the games on the actual eShop and stuff seem overpriced. I, in my personal opinion, I think they're a bit overpriced. Like, there's some games, there's some sales on. I was looking at the sales, and all the sale games were rubbish. Whereas on like the Vita again, like, I saw I got some really good. Can't remember which games I picked up. Basically, I picked up a few games. I think I got the Spyro the Dragon trilogy for really cheap. So it was on a cool bundle, and I was like, wow, that's awesome. That this is just like. Uh? I mean, okay, here's the thing. A couple of the games I've played that I've got, um, the, the actual proper 3DS games, like the Shinobi, I'm loving it. I love that and stuff. But I am, in general, disappointed with the way Nintendo's gone about making this this system. Um, so, yeah, I'm a bit annoyed. <laughs> Even though I got it cheap, I'm kind of a bit annoyed about it. Mm-hmm. Um, I kind of wish, I don't know, I'd waited longer or just got a second hand on even cheaper or something but at this point I think we yeah. can go ahead and say that you are an official Sony fanboy is that is that yeah. right <laughs> take that we, Nintendo you're going more and more towards the fanboyism and I yeah, love it how, I love it embrace that I don't know how this has happened I used to not like Sony at all but they seem to be doing everything right for me like these <laughs> days I really enjoy their stuff and uh yeah, I think I am leaning more towards it now, which is worrying. Is I'm still hilarious. getting an Xbox One, though, Chris. Still getting an Xbox One. No, Damn. you're not. You're not. <laughs> but yeah, there you go. That's my mini rant over, and I'm going to pass on to whoever wants to go next. So. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, Abraham, uh, you know, I, I, I apologize. I should have uh, let everyone know at the beginning of the show, but you are an accomplished stand-up comedian, and, uh, you know, very, very funny. Uh, I've been viewing some of your stuff on YouTube, and I actually I really loved it. So... Can you tell us a little bit uh, about yourself and then also kind of what you've been up to this week? Oh, yeah. Well, so I've just come back from Asia. I was just doing some shows out in uh, Hong Kong and in China and the mainland. And then I went on to um, Japan where my brother lives and did a little mini sh- um, Shenmue pilgrimage um, over to Yokosuka. So, um, and originally, though, before I was a comic, I used to work in the video games business. I used to work for Midway Games. That doesn't exist oh, wow. anymore. Um, IDOS. I used to work for Sega. Um, and <laughs> London, which is now Headstrong Games, and I was uh, the, one of the lead testers on Battalion Wars 2 on the Wii, one of the first like, online games. So I've got, not only am I a gamer, but I used to make games, and um, now I'm out of it. But um, I, I, love to, I love to be able to chat with you guys, because otherwise I'm just with comedians talking about comedy. And it's nice <laughs> to talk about me for once, because I can't go into a comedy club full of 400 people and talk about the adventures of Ryo Hazuki trying to arrange his <laughs> death, I don't think um, they'll get it. <laughs> <laughs> that is hilarious. Uh, so you can't be, uh, like, throw a joke out, like you're out looking for sailors or something like that. Or the I know, we once do. we did that, me and a couple, um, couple of comics who had played Shenmue, what, we had a little game that whilst we were doing our routines, we would drop in as many Shenmue catchphrases <laughs> as we could. And the whole audience just looked at us going, why does he keep on asking if I want to game the lucky hit? <laughs> <laughs> I might have seen a black car the day that the, snow, um, the rain turned to snow. I'm not sure. Why does he need to know this? <laughs> it was <laughs> our little game that we played, and we got a point every time we did it. Oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> it would have been awesome if there was just, like, one guy in the back just, like, clapping, like, oh, yes! <laughs> like, just one, some old-school Sega, like, fanboy that's just, like, going nuts, like... <laughs> Oh my god! I know I would be like dying if if I was in one of those shows. <laughs> so, so that's the most I've got out of it. But um, otherwise, what's really great is that Shenmue is now massively it's 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 trending now. You know, giving Shenmue um, you the Shenmue license is a, is a massive deal, and I'm hoping through, you know, this kind of campaigning that Sega might give in. Absolutely awesome. Mm. Uh, and you know, unfortunately, we don't have as much time with you as we would you know like today because uh, you're you know you're a busy guy and you actually have a show tonight. Is that right? Yeah, I've got two shows that I've got to get to, so I'm just going to make sure I leave enough time to get in my car and drive to the airport. <laughs> so we will not try to keep you uh, for very long. Um, but uh, let's get to Andrew really quickly, and then we'll get into uh, some more uh, ta- uh, talking to you, uh, Imran, about uh, Shinmu and uh, more about your career. So Andrew, really quickly, uh, what have you been up to, buddy? Well, uh, I had to miss the show last week for personal reasons, but in the meantime, I got um, a PS4 and uh, Super Mario World 3D Land World. I don't know what it's called. <laughs> <laughs> and I, it's, I've been enjoying those, and I've been working a lot. Uh, I'm in this management drive at work, which has been crazy busy, and um, eating a lot of pasta-based dishes... Trying that. Loading. 
Oh yeah, um, <laughs> mono based sources and my life is a roller coaster, guys. <laughs> 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 um, so that's what I've been up to. I won't keep us with my um, banal journeys. Uh, what about you, Chris? What have you been up to, buddy? Oh man, um, I have to actually tell what I've been up to this week. Um, man, uh, not really a lot. Uh, you know, we had a good Thanksgiving here in the states. I, you know, I know you guys don't celebrate uh, Thanksgiving uh, over in your countries, but here in America, we have an excuse to eat a lot of fattening foods and get fatter than we are uh, already. So I had a good uh, Thanksgiving with that. The wife flew up uh, from Florida. She's down there right now, going to school, so she was able to come up. Uh, I was, I was happy because I was able to have some sex, which I haven't had in weeks. Uh, so I was able to do lots of that. That was fun. Um, and, uh, I was all around. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's good uh, you know, uh, have a little sex when uh, you get uh, sex star for so long. But uh, other than that, I've been playing a lot of Vita. i um, been playing some PS4. I only have Killzone on it right now. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about that later on, but... Uh, I'm really ready for the next game to come out. Gran Turismo is coming out, I think, uh, next week. So uh, I will probably pick that up. Um, and other than that, yeah, I haven't really been doing a lot. So anyway, uh, that's what we've been up to. Like we said before, now let's get into some talk with Imran. Oh, yeah. And you mentioned that you got started in the video game industry. So can you take us back? And kind of work your way up to the present, and tell us, you know, how you kind of got started in the video game industry, why you got started in the video game industry, and you know, uh, you know, kick us off from there. Right, I'll try and give you the most succinct version I can. So, um, I've been playing video games ever since I was a kid, but it was when I got my NES, the 8-bit NES, um, everything changed. The moment I played Super Mario Bros., like, you know, the moment you hear the first few jingles, I was like, that's it. This is what I want to do: is make video games. So that was the dream since I was about 11 years old, um, and so I pursued like. You know, back in the day when I was a kid, you couldn't, you know, there was no kind of online infrastructure where you could be, you know, modding levels at home and coding and learning stuff. So I tried to go the academic route. That wasn't for me. And I just managed, I wrote a letter to somebody at Midway Games, asked for them, asked them just for some advice, and um, they gave me a job. And that was it. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> that's how, so that's how easy it is. All you got to do is write a letter and you're in the video game industry. How amazing yeah, well, is that? I was lucky. I wrote loads of letters, but I wrote one letter quite specifically to a producer um, that had been interviewed in a Dreamcast magazine. And something about his interview said to me that if I, if I, email, if I you know, get in contact with him, he'll understand where I'm coming from. Because he had got into the games industry without any formal qualifications. He had done it off the back of being the Nintendo Challenger champion during the 90s. <laughs> Okay. The best at Street Fighter, the best at Mario Kart. And so I wrote him a letter and I said, look, can I, can I get like, you know, half an hour of your time, just want some advice on what I need to do. And he gave me a job just off the back of that. So I was in. That's and amazing. I, That's yeah, a really great story. I, I, the games industry, being uh, between being basically a games tester and an assistant producer. So I, I've kind of done a bit of everything. I've worked in publishing and I've worked in development. Um, and... Um, eventually, I kind of went, right, do I want to sit behind a desk and be told what to do, or do I want to get up on stage and be the hero every evening? And um, that, so I made a transition out of, uh, out of video games and into stand-up. But video games is still my love. It's still, you know, it's still a passion of mine, even though I don't get to play as much. Um, and the reason I guess I'm here on this um, nerd class with you guys is to talk about Shenmue, one of the games that, you know, just it's close to all of our hearts. It's an incredible piece of technology and art. Absolutely. Um, one of the things I, that I do love about your stand-up comedy is that you still talk a lot about video games in it, yeah. uh, which well, is not something well, that a lot of like co comics do today. Well, you know what? I was lucky because I can talk about it from a genuine position because I'm a gamer. Also, that story you've seen me do, um, if you YouTube my name, it, it's well, I think the, the, the big video that comes up. Is, is it the um, Xbox one? Yeah, the Xbox Live story. Yeah. So, yeah. Absolutely true. All of those words were said word for word. Um, <laughs> I did go to school in America, by the way, when I was when I was 12, 13 years old. So it all kind of fit perfectly, and I was. I was just playing Call of Duty with a friend of mine. Um, these, you know, American kids uh, heard heard our accents. They decided to insult me, upset me. I wrote a routine about it, and it launched my career. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> I guess I was lucky. 
Oh, I, would, uh, yeah. I, would, I would love to be able to say that most American teenagers aren't like that, but I would be lying <laughs> if I did. <laughs> we're mostly assholes, and we're very ignorant people. <laughs> Anyone that's different than us Americans are, are wrong and strange. It's this, this weird <laughs> mindset that Amer- most well, Americans have. Kid, and, and they want to, and they wanted to, you know, they, they wanted to give me a hard time. But you know, I'm grateful. I'm grateful because you know they might they might think that they were funny and that they got the upper hand. But you know, I got a TV career out of it. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, oh, okay, and a great routine. So yeah, I got to talk, I got to write that routine. I wish I could write more stuff about video games that that main that a mainstream audience would understand. But you know, it, it's I can't just go up there and start doing jokes about why Contra 3 is the greatest, you know, action platformer that is <laughs> They just won't understand, do you know what I mean? <laughs> missile to missile, trying to take out a force field on the back end of an alien spaceship. <laughs> they just won't appreciate it. We need to get you on, like, the VGAs or something like that. Like, that that would be, like, a perfect time. Like, that, you'd be in your element, you'd have, uh, you know, audience to do stand-up yeah. in front of, and you have, like, the gamers right there. You could do, like, a whole set. With just oh, uh, talking about games. I, I did get to do. I recently got to host the Develop Awards in the UK for all the UK um, European developers. Oh, nice! Oh, really? You know, um, so mm. Peter Molyneux was in the audience. You know, um, Mr. X Lionhead, who's now at Twenty Two Cans. Exactly. Um, like Miles Jacobson from Sports Interactive. So we had quite a few wow. UK industry names, and because I knew they were in the audience, I did a bit of material about them and their games, and they really appreciated that. And I can't do that anywhere else. I can only do it in front of a, you know, an industry audience. That yeah, is that's awesome. Pre- oh, that's brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but so you, you talked to us a little bit about uh, your recent trip uh, to Asia. Can you kind of uh, expound on that and uh, go into a little bit more detail? Um, I think I saw that uh, you, you visited quite a lot of places while you were there. Yeah, yeah. So on this trip, what I did, we went to Hong Kong first, then mainland China, and then I... Had a holiday in Japan because my brother lives in Japan, so I thought um, I'd do it. So I did this reverse Shenmue pilgrimage. So we went to Hong Kong first. So I went to Kowloon Harbor, started taking photos, going, "This is where Rio landed," you know, um, in the sequel to his game. But there's very little to to do in. Uh, there's very little about Hong Kong that fits directly with the structure of Shenmue 2. So there, apart from the harbor, there wasn't much that there was, you know, that I could relate to um, the game in real life. However, when I went on to Japan, I went all the way to Yokosuka, and I went to the famous Doboita Street, which um, a lot of Shenmue 1 has been fashioned around, and that was incredible, walking around those streets going, what, this is, look, this is Tom's Diner, um, and these are like, you know, the vending machines that he plays, um, plays with in the game. That was kind of, um, it's quite surreal when you get to walk around the real-life version of a video game environment you've played in. I know the thought of it is like uber nerdy, but at any point, did you try to picture yourself as Ryu, like walking through and kind of oh, doing it? Oh, the entire time I walked around Japan, I was just singing like it, the music from the Shenmue levels in my head. <laughs> yeah. uh, and I did. I was so tempted to ask people if they'd seen a black car. Just, uh, <laughs> but I was thinking. If I do this, I've got no one around me to appreciate it, and two, they might just go, here's another gaijin thinking he's hilarious doing his Shenmue. Yeah. So they, probably, they probably had quite a few Shenmue fans turn up there and have a look around. Yeah, I mean, Andrew's done something very similar as well, in a way, um, with the whole Shenmue thing. Yeah, well, I mean, I went to Hong Kong, and I, I filmed the the movie, In Rear's Footsteps 2, there, and I went, I went to all those places... Uh, in in real footsteps and the sequel is being worked on now. Um, interestingly, when I was in Yokosuka myself, the sailors found me <laughs> because um, I was walking down the street with my buddy, and we were just going down Doboita Street and going, "Wow, this is amazing! Wow!" And these two American sailors walked past us and they're like, "How you doing, guys?" We're just like, what? <laughs> "We didn't even need to look for them. <laughs> they're right there." <laughs> Uh. <laughs> That's my story. Yeah, well, it's great. You know, when you get there, the moment you get out of your Kosuka station, the harbour is right in front of you, and Dobuita Street is just like it's a five minute walk. And mm. the great thing, when you get to the harbour, it does look, you know, it, it, it feels like you are on the harbour in in, um, in Shenmue 1. And you've even got, you know, so in Shenmue 1 at the start of the game, you've got that predatory bird that flies through the game. Mm. It's like a, like a falcon or something like that. Yeah. 
uh, th there's quite a few of those around the harbour as well. Oh, sweet. Quite, it's an animal indicative to that area. And you'll see, like, you know, Japanese kind of battleships there. And when I was there 10 years ago, there were submarines, um, but they didn't have them this time. Oh, nice. They were there when oh. I was there. So let's let's go back and, and talk a little bit uh, more about Shinmu. What was it about the game that has create like made you into such a big fan of it? Can you go back and and talk about what it was and the impact it had on you when you first played it? Yeah. Um, so it's been. So I remember I first played it. It would have been um, like the December of two thousand. Um, and I remember I, th I got the game for free because when I was at Midway, we were friends with Sega, and they gave us the game for free. And I thought, well, this is great. I've just got you know the the supposedly the best Dreamcast game for nothing. So I took it home, um, and I played it, and I hated it. I absolutely oh, hated it. No. I, I thought the controls were clunky. It took forever to get out of the house and down the street. The, I just didn't understand it. I just thought it was the biggest hyped-up piece of nonsense oh, wow. um, that I'd ever played. And so I, 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 st I didn't play it. I left, I, I left it a week, and then I thought, you know what? Let me give it one more go and let's see what happens. So I started all over again because I never used a, a VMU the first time round, so I never saved anything. <laughs> um, I played it a second time round and I invested that a proper, uh, you know, some time into it. And immediately, and well, not immediately, I then fell in love with it. And that's when I told all my friends, "You have to play this game, and you need to give it a couple of hours. And I promise you, it's the best thing that you've played in a long time." And um, I was right, and they told me I was right. That is awesome. Oh, well, it's great. So it was for its time. I, I know now technologically it's it's very behind. If you look at if you you know hold it up against the likes of GTA and its massive open you know sandbox kind of style of gaming, it it doesn't compete. However, it was the first of its kind. It allowed you to explore this world and pick up you know things that weren't important to the storyline. You can go and buy little um, capsule toys. You can you know feed the cat that's starving to death down the street. You can do all these little things, and I think. It was so immersive and so well done that you looked at people as they walked past and as they took out umbrellas and went into their houses and thought, "That's a real person." It felt like they, you know, you were really in a in a world inhabited by by actual um, beings rather than just you know random sprites running around. Yeah, exactly. I, I remember I used to just follow people around just to see what they would do. I would spend <laughs> hours literally just walking and following yeah. people, and I would, it would exactly what you just said. It it made it feel for the first time that I ever played a video game that it was more than just a, a video game. Like I felt like I was in a living world where yes, yeah. there was people that lived with inside it that had like daily you know errands that they would go do, and you know they would have uh, things that they would do, and it was just so awesome every day to see those same people. You know, you have to go home at a certain time because you had to go to sleep and you wake up and, you know, you'd see those same people doing the same kind of things because that's just the, what the routine was. Uh, and it was so magical for me at, at that time because there's absolutely nothing like it uh, see, at that time. I actually still think that, in a ca that what you've just mentioned is kind of still true. There is still nothing quite like it. Even though, like you've just mentioned GTA and stuff, there's big open sort of um, sandbox worlds these days. Mm. They still don't have the same in-depth... Um, like, um, oh god, I can't think of the words. <laughs> Basically, you don't like care the... about the protagonist, you don't care about the character. You, you're not in his shoes. You, 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 in terms of like, you don't care about his plight and what he has to do. Whereas you do with Rio. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, and like the detail and description of the world around in Shemu, like you, like you guys are saying, like the people going to work doing the stuff in most open world games, it's just random people literally walking down the road. They're not actually doing anything. They're just walking around. And like yeah. you, a Spider-Man, or I don't know, some guy from GTA just happens to run them over or whatever. In this, you like, you can stop, you can talk to them. They'll like go, oh, I'm, I'm busy at the moment, or they'll actually speak to you. And, and like the weather and stuff was meant to actually be the actual weather forecast from back in the day, because it's set in 1980. I can't even remember now, but um, that apparently was, there's that was. Um... I think it was either something you unlocked or you had to download it off the internet. But that that wasn't the way it was. When you booted up the game, you had to either unlock it or download it. Well, with the weather. Yeah. Really? No, no. The I weather, don't think the weather that in was... The game was based on the actual weather in that in your Costco in the eighties. Yeah, um, because there, you could uh, you can go to the phone box and phone up the weather forecast, and they'd actually predict for you what the weather's going to be because it's actually all planned oh. out and stuff. Because it was the actual weather. Yeah. From See, the I read it was like time. I read it was like DLC or an unlockable or something. 
Uh, I'm pretty mm -hmm. sure it was. I'm pretty sure that pit was part of the game. Yeah. But oh, it's just good. like all that detail and stuff. And like when you go to a shop to buy something, you don't go up to a counter with like the, the guy setting the stuff and like they've got everything in a row. You have to actually go to the shelves and look at them and. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. Like, I still think the detail in Shemu is still more than what most like modern games are. Um, yeah, so I still think it's still a magical touch to it, even today. So, Imran, you you have a a, a kind of a unique uh, angle to kind of talk about this ne next subject because you have been in the video game industry. You're familiar with the way it works, um, yeah. and so obviously you're very familiar with the uh, you know give you the uh, Shemu license. Uh, yes. How do you feel about that? I know you're very passionate about it. Is this a realistic thing that can happen? And you know, what more can you know? If it is, what more can people do to you know keep continuing and, and putting pressure on Sega to do something? Do you think this is something that could actually happen? Well, you know what? I hope so because we all want it to happen. Now, I know the bottom line at the end of the day is the economics. That you know, the first two games, even though we love them and we bought them, they didn't sell enough to justify continuing on. Um, the franchise, but I guess the way that could change is that Shenmue 1 and 2 already exist, they're great games, and I think there's a, an, a definitely an argument to re-release the first two games on current platforms, um, w with or without, you know, b being upscaled or high def or any of that, and then perhaps if we can create more Shenmue fans, then we can justify Shenmue 3 to be fully developed. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, I know it's 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 really just amazing what I've seen. I mean, there is such a, a push on social media. I mean, Twitter, every day I go out to Twitter and I see something Shinmu related. Uh, and and like you mentioned earlier, uh, you know, Shinmu was trending very recently uh, in, in the latest, like, uh, Twitter push. Uh, so it's it's very evident that, you know, fans out there, and there's a... I, I, I think a lot of people underestimate the desire and the dedication of the Shinmu fans out there to actually, you know, support a new Shinmu game. Yeah. Oh, we, de we definitely want it. I think what, you know, well, we've got Shenmue's cousin, which is Yakuza, which seems to be doing quite um, quite well. And it, it's, it's nice to know that they've kind of, you know, rehashed the technology to make that game kind of work. But the potential for another Shenmue is just so incredible, especially now. Imagine the world that you can create. Imagine what you know, wherever they based the third game would look like and just how in-depth it would be. But I think perhaps at the very least, get Shenmue 1 and 2 out on the virtual console, on Xbox, you know, live arcade. Get, um, get, get it out on, um, you know, re-release it so people can experience it, create more Shenmue fans. Um, just, I'm so excited about just where it can go because the story means so much to all of us, to, to all the fans, and yeah. we want to share that with more games. Yeah, I think that's one of the key things. The story was never finished for us. It's not like they made a really good game and people want a sequel. It's the fact that the story never actually finished and we're just like, oh my god, what the hell happens next? Like, get, what happens out of that cave? What happens in the cave, yeah. man? Well, that was it. I think the game was normal up until that point where it suddenly it, it, it gave, it introduced a supernatural element and then yeah. you're like, what the, what? <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? And then they just leave you on that cliffhanger. So, like, where it goes next is going to be, you know, epic. And we really... I know, you know, there was a Shenmue online that apparently mm. was um, planned to go to be released in China only. Did you see that? Yeah, that, mm. that was... Yeah, I remember when that came out. It was a few years ago. I think it's shut down now, though, right? Yeah, yeah, I think, I think it, it didn't go anywhere. Um, yeah, I think, I think they didn't actually launch it. And they actually released The Matrix online instead of something Sega did, which didn't go anywhere. I, like, I, I think made... over in Asia, it, it, did, it, was, it was online for a while. Was it? Okay, yeah. I didn't realize that. Yeah, it was. It, it launched. I do. Ah, see, I, I heard that they changed it to The Matrix online or something and then just sort of <laughs> shut it down. <laughs> oh, also, is it in Sonic All-Star Racing that you can unlock Ryo Hazuki on his uh, motorbike? Is that right? Yeah, uh, yes. in the first one, uh, Ryu Hazuki is a playable character. Um, in All Stars Racing Transformed, he was not in it, but yeah. he by far has been the most requested character to reappear in it. I know that uh, Steve Lysett, who's a producer at Sumo Digital, uh, mm. they did a uh, a poll uh, asking fans like what character they would want, uh, you know, to to join the cast, and Ryu by far. Was the uh, the number one uh, you know oh, wow. uh, voted person, and then here recently uh, Adam Boys, who is uh, pretty high up over at Sony in the the PlayStation uh, you know community out there, um, they actually were asking people recently on Twitter and, and social media, you know, tell us what games that you want to see on the PlayStation, and they're going to make a big list, 
and you know those are the games that we're going to want to try to to try to make. And evidently, Shinmu uh, was very high up, number one, and I think Yakuza was also very high up as well. But you know, it's it's crazy. You know, Shinmu fans are speaking out; they want this game. Uh, so I wanted to ask you, Imran, it, you know, what is your a pie in the sky? You know, what do you want to see happen with this franchise? Do you think? Uh, just a Shinmu three, just a you know, do it and just close out the storyline and and that be it. Or you know, what would you like to see happen from here? Well, of course, Shenmue three is the ultimate goal. But from a practical point of view, I think okay, first of all, get the re- get the first two games re released on all the virtual consoles, or PlayStation, on Nintendo, uh, on Xbox. Definitely do that. Make it available to people who didn't own a Dreamcast or an Xbox One help start building um, the fan base, to, uh, introducing it to new people also, and which would probably be very easy for them to do as well, introduce Ryo and his father and Landy as playable characters in Virtua Fighter. Why they haven't done that yet blows my mind. Why has no one thought of that? Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> You're like the first person I've heard say that. They're That's brilliant. Characters, stick them in Virtua Fighter and allow them, like, you know, everybody's an Akira fan. Everybody's, you know, has got their favorite character in all these beat-em-ups. Make them unlockable, um, um, playable characters in the next Virtua Fighter. And people are like, who are these guys? We want to. And then suddenly you'd be like, well, do you want to know, do you want, would you like to play an adventure game featuring all three of these where this guy's dad is killed by this guy and you've got to solve the entire mystery? Shenmue 3 would fly off the back of that, surely. That's an awesome idea, and I would love to see Fukusan added to that list as well to round out to give it the oh, nice even number. <laughs> so I'm not on Fukusan, but uh, and also um, I've forgotten his name now. Um, the, 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 his friend, the Chinese guy in the suit. Um, oh yeah, Guizan, Guizan. Oh, Guizan. whoa! I'm yeah, blanking on his name. Character in it as well. So could Tom. Tom could be a playable character in it as well. That'd be pretty funny. Hot dog, um, hot dog jujitsu. <laughs> no, ca- capoeira. Uh, was it Capoeira? Was he a Capoeira guy? Okay. No, no, I was, I was thinking, like, he, he's got that look for it. Like, the what's that Tekken character that fights with Capoeira? Oh, Eddie. Is it Eddie? Eddie, that yeah, that kind of looks similar. Right, 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 yeah, because of the hair, because of the hair. So yeah. I think you could introduce a lot of Shenmue characters in the next Virtua Fighter, or, 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 you know, get them as guest characters in the next Tekken, or in the next whatever, whatever game can take them and build a love for these characters because they've got an amazing backstory that people already care about. Yeah. That, that is a great idea. idea. That's um, fantastic. <laughs> Imran, you know, I know that you're a very busy guy. I know that you got to get going. Uh, but I want to thank you for coming on to the show. Hey, thanks um, for having me. Yeah, I, when, when you get some more time, I, we would love to have you back on the show uh, where we could just sit and just talk more about Shinmu because this has been a lot of fun. Uh, I want to ask really quickly, where can our, our viewers and our listeners see more about you and, and, and follow you. Can you kind of tell us where uh, they can find more about yeah. you? I'm on Twitter. You can go to my website, which is, um, I believe it's in the little thing that I've got underneath my, um, right there, is um, imranyusuf.com. I'm on Twitter. There's a Facebook fan page. Um, I think any of my stuff that I've done on television in the UK is available on YouTube that you guys can watch on that end. Um, and I, I'm going to do my best to do more video game related material. Hopefully I'll do that in the next bit of television that I do. Um, and yeah, please follow me. And if I can do anything with the you know modest profile that I have to to help make Shenmue happen, um, then I, I'm then I'm going to give you know lend my support the most I can. And I'm asking all the other Shenmue fans up there, don't give up. We need to continue with the hashtags. You know, give you the Shenmue license. We need to make Shenmue happen. Absolutely. And you know, speaking you know you know as a whole from the uh, the the Sega and Shenmue community, we truly appreciate that you know you're using. You know, uh, time and in, in your spending time to try to promote this uh, because we, you know, we truly appreciate it. Uh, you, you know, you're you're one of us. You're a Sega nerd. You're a Shinmu fan. We absolutely, absolutely. love it, uh, mm-hmm. and we definitely want to keep uh, you know seeing you got you, you succeed out there and you know promote everything that you're doing. Awesome, awesome. Thank you very much, guys. Thanks very much for having me on your show, and I look forward to speaking to you guys again. Awesome. Yeah, thanks, thanks, buddy. Take it cool. easy. Thanks a lot. Cheers. What a guy. What a Man. lovely guy. <laughs> He's a great guy. He's a fantastic guy. Man. Yeah. And uh, so for, for everyone uh, still viewing, uh, Emran is actually going to be a part of uh, Andrew's Shinmu documentary. Do you want to uh, mm. you talk a little bit about that, Andrew? Yeah. Um, well, the, the movie's gone through a, a sort of restructure. We, we're trying to um, 
<coughs> rejig the format to make it more interesting. Uh, it's going to delay it a little bit, but Imran is part of that push to make it more interesting um, because he's a, he's got a high profile. Um, I think it would make people more interested in the film. Uh, if they said, you know, Imran Yusuf's in this, it's like, wow, really? I'm, I'm going to see what he has to say about this. And um, hopefully it turns more people onto Shenmue. Um, but he, his inclusion in it, you know, in addition to being great to talk about Shenmue with someone who's so knowledgeable, uh, knowledgeable about it, who was in the industry at the time, um, is part of a push to make the, the next film more accessible to non-Shenmue fans. Um, because he does a really good job of explaining why he loves it um, and, and giving an insight into what the industry was like back then and what people were feeling about it. So it was awesome listening to him talk about it, and you, you know, you just look forward to seeing that in the finished movie. I'm really excited uh, to see uh, the next Shinmu documentary come about. Is uh, So you said it's going to be delayed a little bit. What's the new time frame? What, what are you looking at at this point? Uh, we're looking at March of next year. Okay. That's not too far so off. Not, you know, not too long. Months. We were going to try to launch for Christmas this year, but um, that's not happening now. Uh, because my day job is at a department store, and I just don't have time over Christmas to do anything. Um even sleep, so <laughs> um, yeah, it, it's we're looking at March. So if we can launch it earlier, I'd, I'd love to. But uh, I'll keep everyone updated on the time and the date, so uh, no one misses out. Awesome, and as always, we're gonna uh, heavily promote it on the website. So everyone, just keep watching. Uh, you know, uh, Sega Nerds uh, for more information on uh, you know Andrew's Shinmu documentary. I cannot wait because I was a big fan of your first documentary, and that's actually really what turned me on and, and got me talking to you, Andrew, and that's kind of how we became friends. Yeah. Because I was like, oh my god, this is awesome. I came across it one day. I don't even remember how I found it, honestly. And uh, and then, no, wait, it was, I somehow, no, that's what it was. I somehow found, it was one of the Shinmu things on Twitter, retweeted your Indiegogo campaign. That's what it was. Oh, and, right, uh, yeah, that's I, right. Your Indiegogo campaign... I right right away I went ahead and contributed to it. Then I was like, let's get you on the podcast and uh, hey, you know and start talking about this and, and promote it. And then you and I honestly we fell in love. You and I we, we yeah. Did, we, there was so much chemistry between us that we. I, I'm just became... gonna say I hope we never meet because I'm gonna destroy your wedding, uh, your uh, <laughs> your marriage, man. <laughs> well, we we plan on meeting. Hopefully, uh, we're we're hoping that uh, E3 come around uh, this next year, uh, mm. we're all going to be able to go to E3 and have, like, it's going to be the most bromantic E3 of all time. It's going to be amazing. Oh, the bromance will be tangible. <laughs> It'll be so <laughs> thick. We'll we'll preach the trailer the for the bromance. <laughs> so, um, now, instead of uh, what we normally do where we kind of go into <coughs> the news and, and all that stuff, we wanted to kind of more have a feature discussion. Uh, at this point in the Nerdcast. Uh, so we wanted to talk a little bit about an article that I wrote yesterday and I, and I published um, titled Sega's Big Next Generation Blunder. Uh, and at this point, I will share my screen uh, really quickly. Hopefully it will not ruin my uh, video like it usually does. But anyway, here's the article right here. So essentially... Yeah, there you go. That's okay, so essentially what uh, I was you know, kind of talking about in this is that Sega missed a giant opportunity uh, with the launch of the Xbox One and the PlayStation 4. Uh, basically, Sega put a lot of its eggs in the Nintendo Wii U. Uh, they signed an exclusive deal with Nintendo to bring three Sonic games uh, to its console. You know, as you can see here, it's uh, Sonic Lost World was the first game. Uh, scroll down a little bit more, and then it was uh, the new uh, Mario and Sonic game. Which is, I can completely understand the Mario and Sonic game because the 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 other few ones were giant giant sellers. They sold, I think, the original Mario and Sonic game has sold nearly eight million units worldwide to date, which is an incredible uh, amount. It was a massive success. So I understand going there. One of my main issues is that uh, you know there was so much hype surrounding the launches of these next consoles. It's just crazy to me that Sega didn't have anything available at launch for any of these consoles. Uh, I was I said in the in the in the article that you know they could have at least done something 
to have at launch and at ready. Last generation, uh, for the Xbox launch, they had Condemned Criminal Origins, which turned out to be one of my favorite games of last generation mm. uh, that, on the Xbox 360. Um, still to date. I mean, I have it. It's, it's sitting on my shelf. It's one of the games I will never, no matter what, I will never get rid of because it's one of my all-time favorite games. Uh, and then on the Wii, I believe it was Super Monkey Ball Banana Blitz, uh, which they had at launch. Uh, I don't think they had anything at launch for the PS3, but soon after they did release some stuff. Uh, but, you know, what's crazy to me is that there is nothing announced for any of these consoles. Sega has nothing announced. I will, really quickly, I will run down a list of the announced games that Sega has uh, that we know of. So, Sonic the Hedgehog 2 on mobile devices was supposed to come out in November. Obviously, it's not here yet. Sega has told us that they are going to be announcing something here soon. Then we have all the 3D Sega games, like the Sega Master System and the Genesis games, uh, Sonic the Hedgehog, Altered Beast, Echo the Dolphin, Galaxy Force 2, Shinobi 2, and Streets of Rage, which will be coming on the 3DS eShop. Graham, you'll be able to play those games. Yay. Actually, we, we have some, we, we have some uh, codes we got to give away, Graham. Oh. you got to get on that. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. Maybe we can come up with something by the end of the show. Start thinking, Graham. We'll come up... Okay. We're, we... Here, here's a promise. By the end of the show, everyone listening, we're going to come up with a contest to give away codes, <laughs> I believe. Uh, what, what what were the were the codes? Was it Sonic the Hedgehog and Altered Beast? No, it was... Making hell. Sorry. Oh, I, no, I was... no, it was Hang On and... Um, Space um, um, Harrier. Space Harrier, thank you. Yeah. Those are the ones. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, so going forward, we have Hero Bank, which is scheduled to release on December 22nd in Japan on the 3DS, which has not had confirmation of a Western release to date. We have Sonic Racing Transformed on mobile. That a, has a winter release date. Rhythm Thief on iOS. Yakuza Restoration, which is actually slated to release on the PS4, but most likely will not be released in the West based on the trends of Sega. And they, there's been no announced uh, release date, or I'm sorry, no announced uh, uh, releasing in the West. But it's supposed to come out February 22nd in Japan. We have Fantasy Star Nova, which is on the Vita, supposed to come out in 2014. Nothing announced in the West. Fantasy Star Online 2, okay. <laughs> I think we can all kind of... Uh, I don't know. We, don't, we have no idea what's going on with that game. And lastly, we have Hiroki on the iOS. Now, as far as I know, those are all of the announced and publicly announced uh, Sega games at this point throughout the end of time. What, so, sorry, well, sorry to... Uh, did you say Sonic and All-Stars Racing Transforms for 3DS? Or? For mobile. Oh, for mobile. Okay, cool. For mobile. Yeah. I thought, cause, yeah, I thought it had already been released on 3DS, but yeah, so, cool. Basically, okay, the PlayStation 4, as of December 3rd, has sold through more than it has sold 2.1 million units. Whoa. The Xbox One is not far behind. The thing is, is that the games that were released alongside these consoles got a giant sales boost because of all of the hype surrounding it. And I'm just saying, like, why get wasted a gigantic opportunity to release something that would have been able to almost like, with the hype surrounding it, with all the pre-launch stuff, it would have been amazing. Basically, what I wanted to see, and what I what I kind of talked about in this article, Sega should never have signed the exclusivity agreement with Nintendo. Gigantic, mm. gigantic mistake. Sonic Lost I World. see what they were doing, though. Like, they were... They were putting their eggs in one basket, but I think they were going, let's see if sales pick up and do well. We've already signed this contract, so we can't get out of it. Uh, this is going to be the next big hit because Wii's going to be the best thing. I mean, we've got, we've got to assume that they signed this agreement well before the Wii launched. So pre-orders mm. probably looked good for the Wii U. Pre-orders probably look good. And they were like, oh, this is going to sell pretty well, so this is going to be a good move for us. We're going to get in the door early before next-gen launches. Um, but it just didn't pan out that way because Nintendo doesn't really seem to look like they know what they're doing right now. <laughs> at all. At all. Yeah. Uh, I, I was saying that, think about if 
Sega released these games simultaneously across all platforms, but also had on the PS4 and the Xbox One. Mm-hmm. You know, it, the, the Sonic Lost World would have been able to have been showcased in all the pre-launch events, and it would have had it would have shared the spotlight with all of those games. Yeah. Instead, it was completely lost. It it released, I think, in North America, I think it was October 29th or 22nd. It released the same day as Assassin's Creed 4 <laughs> and Battlefield 4. No one... Everyone bought those games. The sales numbers are terrible. Across yeah. all regions. Yeah. Across and, Japan, North America, and the UK. And it's, it's something you picked up on in your article, because you said actually quite a few of the launch titles for PS, PS4 and Xbox One, they're not that amazing, like Knack, for example, on the PS4, the reviews are very mixed I've seen so far. Um, some people actually say it's rubbish, some people say it's pretty good, but I mean, imagine like a well-known character like Sonic up against like Knack, for example, because Knack's actually sold quite well, simply because there wasn't much else available to play, really. So if Sonic was on the system, yeah, I reckon it would have... I mean, if you were to go and buy, buy a brand new console and you see a familiar face, you're like, yeah, Sonic... Or this other random game that no one's ever heard of. Let's. I think it's exactly. uh, it's it's crazy, really. Knack has a 55 Metacritic score. There you go. And it's... it outsold the new Super Mario 3D World game. <laughs> <laughs> that's in in the UK. So yeah, a game surprising. that obviously I think everyone can can easily say that the Mario game is easily the better game. Uh, oh, I think it's way you, way you better. It. Yeah. And so it, it Mario's the better game, but it's on a console that no one owns. And Knack, because everyone's buying this game, they need games to play. They buy Knack. So you know, even though Sonic Lost World wasn't the best game in the franchise, and certainly it it, it received mixed reviews, and a lot of people were disappointed in it, it still would have been a huge seller for Sega. Instead, yeah. Sega is looking. What what does Sega have for this holiday season? There's nothing out there that a Sega bunch has. Of that's a virtual console games. That's it. Pretty much. Yeah, it's 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 digital games. You know, one of the games that Sega released was Typing of the Dead Overkill, uh, which came out of nowhere. Mm. We didn't even know it was going to release. It came out a few days before uh, uh, Halloween. It was a, it's a great game. I mean, they did a really good job with it. Uh, they just actually released some uh, new DLC. They released the Football Manager DLC for free uh, here a couple days ago. Um, great game, but it's not going to move a ton of units. I mean, it's on no. Steam. Uh, you know, there's just it's it's not going to it's not going to move a lot. The thing that I think that Sega should have done, this would have been an amazing opportunity to release Shinmu on HD, just a digital title. Have it on. The, the PlayStation Network and Xbox Live Arcade for twenty to thirty dollars, it would have been a great. They would have ridden the all the pre-launch hype. Everyone wants Shinmu. So many people are excited about it. This would have been a great opportunity to introduce new people to the Shinmu series, and they would have. It, it would have been a great litmus test, essentially to see of what the likelihood and the, the potential profitability would be for a Shinmu 3. If Shinmu 1 and 2 HD sells incredibly well on digitally on these platforms, then hey, maybe there is actually a potential to bring Shinmu 3 out on these same platforms. If it sells like shit, then Sega can be like, hey, you know what? We released Shinmu 1 and 2 on HD and it didn't sell well, so that's why we're not going to go forward with Shinmu 3. But it would it would have been a great idea, and it wouldn't have cost that much just to essentially port the games over from the Dreamcast and the Xbox to the new platforms, and just basically upgrade the resolutions is all they would have had to do. So that was essentially my argument in there. So I want to kind of get your guys' opinion on that. What do you what do you make of Sega's kind of holiday season and? Do you think that they're... I, I, I kind of had some harsh words in, in the article about Sega. I, I call them the holiday losers in all this because <laughs> if they want to be included in the major publishers, they've got to be right there at launch. They've got to be there. Yeah. If they're going to be a major player in the video game industry, you've got to be there at launch of a new console. You've got to do it. Well, yeah. it seems to me like they're allergic to money. 
Like, what, <laughs> what, what, what are they waiting for? I mean, even, even they even haven't announced anything with any weight behind it. Like, there's no killer franchise that they've told us about. There's, there's nothing. It's just, here's a bunch of mobile games. Enjoy. We're going to go <laughs> have a coffee. Like, yeah. I, I don't really understand what they're doing. Um... But it's it's part of an overarching problem that I've really really irritating me at the moment is that there's no communication with customers right now mm -hmm. in terms of what's coming out for 2014. Like we we kind of know some of the stuff that's coming out at some point at 2014, but we might have like a screenshot of it or something. And then there's other developers like Nintendo who told us Jack. They've told us like there's two games coming out for the Wii U. Uh, and um, Sony's like, oh yeah, there's there's like four or five games coming out, and Microsoft's doing the same thing. There's just this massive lack of communication that I've seen, and I know you've got to play your cards uh, close to your chest in this industry because it's pretty cutthroat, but playing them this close to their chest in an atmosphere of economic uh, uncertainty I think is nonsense, and it's frustrating, and we're not living in an era now where we wait for magazines to tell us these things. Like, we want to wake up in the morning and go on IGN, for instance, and look at the news about what's coming out. We don't want to wait six months to learn that there's going to be a game coming out for a console that we paid $300 for at some point. That's so frustrating. And Sega is doing the exact same thing, and it's really frustrating me because they never used to do this. They always used to have a pretty clear development schedule they used to say, this is coming out, and this is coming out, and we're going to port this over, and whatever. But they always had a pretty clear... You always had a pretty clear idea of what they're going to do. And I just don't understand what they're doing. I don't understand what the industry is doing in general. I don't understand why people are being so quiet. It's frustrating me, and it makes me less inclined to want to buy things later because I feel like I'm being treated with disrespect. Hmm. That's fair. One, now, one of the things... Uh, we know Sega has stuff in development. We we understand that there is games in development. Uh, one of the uh, Sega producers, Stephen Frost, was on the show uh, a few months back. He said he's working on an unannounced game. I assume that is going to be a, a next generation game. He didn't. He did not go into details on what that would be. Uh, there and then there's also. Um, Graham, help me. It's the uh, Sonic Dash developer, uh, Hardlight Studios. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the, the head of that, Chris, what was his name, Graham? Southall. Thank you. Chris Southall yeah. was on the show, and he announced that they are actually working on an updated mobile version of a classic Sega franchise, which they're going to be updating, which is also unannounced. So there's still some unannounced games. We know Sega is working on games. The thing is, is that they, the problem is they just, they, they missed a great opportunity uh, with this, uh, the launch of the new consoles, and it's just crazy to think that Sega, you know, is a big developer, but they just don't have anything announced for for next gen consoles. I just, I, I, it's crazy to imagine that even weeks after the console launches, there's just nothing there. Even yeah. if it's like a digital titles, even if it's bringing, you know, a next Dreamcast collection, you know, volume two or three to the PlayStation or Xbox. There's just not that there yet. Yeah. And I think one good... Well, this this could be a bit... Uh, well, basically, I, I think one good sort of litmus test for the whole scenario thing right now is that if I mention to someone... I've got friends who... They're aware of computer games. They don't really play them. They play them very casually. But if I mention I work on a, Se on a Sega fan site or whatever, they're like, the Sega Sega even existing right now. Like, I thought they died a long time ago. It's like, well... Like, that's sort of, like, a very good gauge of where Sega's at in, like, the public eye. Like, gamers, like, well, like, very casual gamers, they've heard of Call of Duty and stuff, and, like, the big games. Like, the big games have come on the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One. They would have no, no doubt heard of at least some of them, but, like, they're not even aware that Sega's around right now. It's like Sega doesn't even, like, even, like, try to, like, get the message out that they're still around, they're still making games, really. And I think that's one other big issue they've got at the moment. They just, you know... They're not really advertising in a way. I know advertising. I know advertising costs money. They're huge. They're huge in Japan. Like it's yeah. massive over there. 
the thing is, it's like Sega owns half of Japan. It's crazy. <laughs> you go over there, and there's Sega billboards everywhere. The, the Sega yeah. logo is like just on buildings for some reason, and it's <laughs> they're everywhere. And the Sega employees just walking around with Sega jackets on, and I don't know. It's it's, it's not. And then you come over to you know I, I came home back to Australia, and it's like. Binary domain is ten dollars at EB Games. <laughs> you know? Yeah. It's... They need to expose that... themselves more, they need to advertise that... more, and they need to tell us what they're that... developing. Yeah, and that's the thing. Binary domain this is another example sorry, another random example. Binary domain is probably one of the best games actually played in the last generation. I thought mm. it was bloody amazing and no one's heard of it. Uh, and I know that happens occasionally with sort of big RPGs and stuff like that, and like games that perhaps wouldn't be to the taste of a lot of people. But it's like a it's a third person shooter basically. I mean, it's in the sort of similar realm as Gears of War, for example. Um, and yet, no one knows about it. And it did, I don't know how well it sold in the in the end. I don't think it sold that well over in the West, at least. But it's like, ah, oh, bloody hell. And um, yeah, like you say, in Japan, they're, they're kings still, pretty much. They're, they're everywhere. They've got the big arcade. The arcade uh, area is still booming in Japan still, really. I know it's had a peaks mm. and troughs, but it's big over there still, so that's what they're really famous for, and that's how they get their name out. But over here, it's just like uh, no one seems to really know they're still around, which is so it's depressing, really, because they, they can, still can make great games, and they do make great games, but... Yeah, yeah and they, well, they seem and, to be and missing opportunities. To bring, that, to bring that, you know, full circle... Is they've missed Christmas, they've missed the holiday period, they screwed up really bad. They're gonna miss a lot of money. They they could have gotten in on the uh, the Black Saturday, uh, the Black Friday deals, whatever you call them. They could have gotten in on those, but they they they're not gonna do that. They they didn't do that. Um, they're gonna go into next year. They're gonna go into January without anything announced, like anything major announced, which I think is massively boneheaded. Um, we can only assume they're going to announce something at the VGX on Sunday. If they don't, they've got nothing. Yeah, Sucks. I am not <laughs> hopeful that they're going to announce anything at VGX. I think what I think what Sega is uh, doing, they they may announce some stuff between, uh, you know, now E3, but I think they're saving a lot of that for like E3 of next year. Uh, so mm-hmm. we'll see. Hopefully, you know, I don't know. Hopefully, we'll get something, but. Uh, I think, as far as you know, I think we can all agree that uh, Sega has uh, been a pretty big disappointment this holiday season, uh, with with essentially yeah. nothing out there. Um, all right, uh, well, shit. Let's move on to what we've been playing. Who's been playing okay, video la- games? La- I'm gonna let Andrew. Games. Andrew can start with this one this week. Me. <laughs> all right, go for it, mate. I've been I've been playing a lot of video games. Actually. Oh yeah, uh, get in there. <laughs> well, first of all, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, um, Super Mario 3D World. We. Um, that's it, it's brilliant. It's 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 a genius genius game. It is absolutely genius. It's um an incredible platformer with amazing level design, and it's incredibly addictive. I did not want to stop playing it at all. It's incredible. Um. Additionally, I've got uh, Deus Ex Human Revolution, which I've been playing on Wii U, and I didn't like it on Wii U. Like, the control was bad, really bad. Uh, I found the the sticks to be way too touchy. Um, But that said, being able to manipulate the inventory on the controller, with the the gamepad controller, uh, being able to hack with the controller is so much more user-friendly than playing around with the menus on the screen. I love it. Okay. And you can also play off TV on the gamepad, so you can watch TV or have it on the background while you're playing something. It's really cool. Um, and I, it, it grew on me. And I, I mean, I love Deus Ex Human Revolution, and I wanted to try it on Wii U. Um, so I, I've been thoroughly enjoying that. Um, additionally, obviously, I got a PS4. I Wee. finished Killzone Shadowfall. I played a bit of the multiplayer. Um, it's a really good game. It's just kind of frustrating at times. Like, there's times where it's like, did they even test how many enemies are on the screen? Because this is ridiculously hard. Um, the multiplayer is really fun. Uh, it's well balanced. Uh, the fact that you can sort of use everything 
from the get-go. You don't have to unlock a bunch of stuff. Even as a playing field, but it also means that you've got to be good at the game to get somewhere. Like, you have to... You, you can have all the stuff straight away, that's for sure, but you've got to be skillful at it to be uh, to be good and to get the kills. So, Killzone Shadowfall, I'd really recommend it if you picked up a PS4 and um, are looking for another game to play. Uh, definitely check it out, because it's got some of the best multiplayer I've ever played. It's really addictive. Um, the final game I've been playing is the Resident Evil remake on GameCube. Um, I really like it. It's, uh, it's, it's like one of the best survival horror games I've ever made. In fact, in terms of traditional survival horror, I'd say it is the best traditional survival horror I've ever played. Um, so if you've got a GameCube, I really recommend checking it out because it's awesome, yeah. and it's like it goes for about fifteen to twenty dollars, so it's really not that expensive. So about ten pounds. Yeah, it, mm. yeah, I got that on the GameCube. I thought that was amazing when I played that. It's like because mm. I'm a big fan of the original, but yeah, it was really good. Cool. How awesome. about wow. you, Graham? Whoa! Um, as as I mentioned earlier, I picked up a 3DS um, and. Um, I actually played a couple of demos. In fact, going back to last week when Steve was uh, talking about how much he hated uh, Sonic Lost World, I played the demo of Sonic Lost World on the 3DS. I was kind of enjoying it, but I, I'd like to, I need to actually pick up the full game and actually give full opinion on it. But uh, yeah, from the demo, I actually kind of enjoyed that game. Um, but I picked up um, Dead or Alive Dimensions simply because I played the demo on the eShop thing and actually thought this was a cracking game. I haven't haven't played a Dead or Alive game properly for a long time, so just I didn't. I kind of got bored of the franchise, but I haven't actually fully played this one yet, so I have to talk about it more. Shinobi, that game I was mentioned earlier, I love this game. I I've never been a big Shinobi fan. That's one thing. I've liked a couple of the old Shinobi games, especially the Game Gear one, which everyone thinks I'm crazy for because I love that game. But I never really got into That's it. A good one. Oh, good. At least someone else likes it because uh, I've yeah. mentioned it to some other people before, and they're like, "What on the Game Gear? No." Uh, I thought I still think that's my favourite Shinobi out of all of them mm. on the Game Gear, and I, ne I can never get into the Shinobis on the Mega Drive. Really, I don't know why. Uh, I thought generally they seem well made, but I just never got into them. And this is it's a tricky little game, uh, <laughs> but so far I'm loving it. I think the 3D effects on it are they're good basically because it's it's a 2D basically it's like a 2.5D game in a way. Um, mm. So there's bits of 3D-ness in it, but the way they've done it is actually really good. Um, but as I sort of mentioned earlier, I basically still only was on the first level because I suck at it. I started on like, I can't remember, I started on quite a high difficulty to begin with. Couldn't do it, so I went down to the easiest and still was getting a bit tricky. But I got to like the end of the first level. I think it was on the boss. Then I hit the power button by mistake and was just like, ah, <laughs> I think I messaged Chris immediately going, saying, fuck this game, basically. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, so I'm gonna have to pick that up again. Um, also bought Crush 3D, um, mainly out of curiosity because um, if you oh, don't know, this was, oh, was originally on Crush. the PSP, um, mm. and the PSP version of Crush, Crush is flipping brilliant. I've only played the first few levels on this, and I'm not enjoying it as much. Um, I think Crush on the PSP, mainly simply from an aesthetic point of view. It looks better. Like um, I mean, they, the they changed from, it a lot in that because it's Crush completed. It's basically completely different. The level, some of the levels seem very familiar, but the whole graphics of it is very different. It's more cartoony. Mm -hmm. um, the story's changed a bit as well. It's still similar that you're this guy in a dressing gown who gets put into this chair like, to monitor your dreams, basically. But in the PSP version, as far as I remember, I'm going to have to go back and play it, and as far as I remember, it's because you've got insomnia, and the whole right. thing is this doctor's trying to get into your mind and work out why you've got insomnia. Because um, the creatures and bad guys... You, you fight in, in the PSP version are like um, part of your nightmares, basically. In this, it's you're just the doctor's friend, and he's just put you in the chair to test out the chair, basically. So it's got nothing to do with your nightmares. You just and then you get stuck in it. You can't get out because the machine thinks that you're still asleep or something, even though you're not. Something weird like that. Um, yeah, and I don't know. Just uh, I'm still going to play it because it's still actually quite a fun game. But the PSP version, if you've if you've got a PSP or you've got a Vita, cause you can download it on the Vita get it because uh, it's awesome um, but this is actually quite cheap at the moment I've got this for five pounds uh, second hands at game so if you're in the UK game's got it um, definitely worth a play if you've only got the 3DS um, also um, one of these is actually a pickup I haven't played it yet but I actually tweeted this out earlier if anyone who's been monitoring our Twitter um, basically I was in Sainsbury's today which is, if you don't know it's, uh, it's a big supermarket chain over in the UK I don't know if you've got a do you have Sainsbury's in America at all? Or? What is it? 
Sainsbury's? No. Okay. Don't, yeah. I don't. I don't think it's in Australia either. I don't remember. The no, we don't have Sainsbury's. Either. No. Okay. Mm. Basically, it's a big supermarket. Um, buy food, buy clothes, buy whatever you want over there. They also do games and videos and stuff. I walked in the store and they had a big discount thing at the front, and this little baby picked up my eye. I don't know if you can see it. Oh, Aliens, aliens. Colonial Marines. Um, I think that was a limited edition. Did I see that? It is there? a limited edition version, yes. Um, it's currently <laughs> on sale. Only Brand made 500,000 copies of that limited edition. <laughs> um, oh, man. Yeah. Basically, it's only £5 in Sainsbury's at the moment, and that's brand new because they don't do second-hand games there. Um, and literally, even though I know this is meant to be a terrible game, and I didn't pick it up simply because the reviews were so bad and we've known some people who bought it who we've sort of worked with on other sites and they told us not to get it. I'm just curious. I have to play this game now. Simply, but I never wanted to spend more than like a tenner on it. But they just drop <laughs> the As price someone right who's down. played it, it's worth five pounds. Okay. <laughs> it's kind of fun. Like you play the game and it's, it's, it's a decent first person shooter and it has like interesting mechanics in it. Like, there are some moments to make you go, oh, that's neat. Um, so you can enjoy it that way. It's not a good alien story. Okay, <laughs> brilliant. It's a bad alien story. But it's a cool. it's a decent first-person shooter. Okay. Okay, well, that's Grim, good. I have, good uh, I have it also. This is the what the American, or the alien oh. story. This is not the limited edition, but I got this for about 10 bucks off Gamefly. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's it's <laughs> sat on my shelf. I've never played the game. <laughs> so, <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, Bad. Uh, <laughs> moving on, um, very quickly. Um, the other day, I, I basically got a hankering to play my Wii. I hadn't touched my Wii in about four years, I think. I don't oh even know God, where. Oh, my God, that's way too long to play. I know. <laughs> um, but, um, so I, I thought, you know what, everyone's talking about the new Zelda game on the 3DS, I kind of want to play Zelda. So I pulled out Twilight Princess, because I hadn't finished it. I got to the last level, or like the last dungeon, which, as far as I remember, I don't know if they made this up, I'm sure it's in the sky, the last dungeon on Twilight Princess. Um, anyway, yeah, basically I got to that dungeon and stopped playing, and then I thought, I'm going to start playing it again. And I think I messaged Chris on this one as well. I can't believe how bad this game's dated. It's... The start of the game is so bloody boring. Um, it's, you spend like a good two hours just in the first area, and it's just not fun. Um, See, I don't agree with that. Oh, really? No, I think it was the best Zelda ever made, in my opinion. Wow. Um, oh, my it's God. One, one step behind Majora's Mask. Wow, in fact, okay. I love Majora's Mask so much. I'll show you something neat. I love Majora's okay. Mask so much that I also got... A tattoo on his anus. The oh, manga the adaption. The what? There's a manga oh, of Majora's no Mask. Brilliant. That's fantastic. And it's really, really good. Okay. Um, wow. Yeah. So yeah, I don't, I don't, no, I don't agree with that at all. I think it's a fantastic game. It's, Have you played it, it recently? It's dated really though? well. Okay, because I when I first got it, this is when I first got it when it first came out. I did really enjoy this game, but now I'm just like I can't. I don't know. I just wasn't enjoying. It. I got to the third dungeon, I think, this time round, and there's like. Man, I'm kind of bored of this. I kind of want to give it. By the way, just on a side note, I think Majora's Mask is my favourite of the Zelda games, and I love that game yeah. so much. Yeah, I still love Ocarina of Time as well. But I think everyone does. But yeah, Majora's Mask. But anyway, I then decided because I was talking to some people on Facebook, um, I decided to go and pick out uh, Skyward Sword. Yeah, because um, I don't have a Wii oh, U yeah. or anything. I can't. Or, and I couldn't be. I basically couldn't afford the 3DS games. I thought it's like it's like 40 quid over here for the 3DS game. And I'm like, huh? Um, but yeah, That's Skyward expensive. Sword. I'd heard, I'd heard um, sort of uh, in general. I'd heard it's been a good game, but I've had mixed opinions on whether it's the, the best Zelda game or not the best Zelda game and stuff. And some people said it's really good. Some people said it's not as good as other games. But I picked it up, and I just personally, I think the first half an hour of this game sold it for me over well over Twilight Princess. Basically, uh, I found the the cutscenes and the emotion in the game just seemed better. Like I know. So the motion for a Zelda game is not that high. It's not. It's not like an e always been such an epic RPG with like cutscenes and stuff. But the music they used in it and stuff, and the fact they didn't even have like they didn't have like voice acting. It's just still text. But I still thought it was so much better than Twilight Princess's opening. Um, oh, sorry, my alarm's going off on my watch. Um, and I'm I'm on the second dungeon sort of thing on this one so far, and I'm loving it. Although I do think that because um because it's because it's one of the games that we use the um what you call it the Wii motion plus adapter thing. There it, it'll 
the, my little box in the bottom there. I had to pick that up as well, which I managed to find cheap. But um, they overuse it so much in the game. Like everything you do requires using this when it could have just been used as a press of the button. <laughs> and I was just like, mm. kind of at times, I'm like, ah, oh, my wrist is actually hurting from all the waggling <laughs> and stuff you got to do with it. <laughs> but um, which is surprising, seeing how much practice it gets normally. Um, but <laughs> oh, <Uh-oh. Lady. laughs> look out! <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, I do think the sword fighting is really good. They're really chewing that up because the whole it does actually really react to where you're moving it. But yeah, uh, so I've been playing a lot of this and I'm really enjoying it. Um, I still think Majora's Mask and Ocarina of Time are better, but I love this game so far. Um, yeah, and that's what so I mean. You're playing quite a few games actually lately. Exciting yeah. stuff. Yeah. What about you, Chris? What have you oh, been man. indulging in? I feel bad because uh, basically all I've been playing is uh, Ease uh, Memory of Salsetta. Uh, When I haven't been playing this game, I've been listening to the soundtrack. Uh, What came in this, I showed I think last week, is a three-disc compilation soundtrack spanning uh, some of the most iconic songs uh, throughout E's history. Uh, It's really awesome. So what I did is I uploaded it to my Amazon Cloud Player. I ripped all the audio and uploaded it there so I can listen to it on my phone. And, man, there is so much good music on there. I absolutely love the music through Ease. It, they're so good. Uh, that's one of the things that I, I'm really happy that I spent the extra $20 uh, to get this. Um, but the game itself... So does that include the um, the soundtracks to the TurboGrafx games? The thing is, it's it's not like the soundtrack to every single game... On it's every just a single mix. platform, it's a mixture of basically mm. the some of the the most iconic sound you know soundtracks and songs throughout the E's history. Uh, let's see, I want to see if it's uh yeah they don't it just says uh with selections from the musical history of E's. Uh, but there is a ton of music on there. Um, there is so much good stuff on here. Uh, Andrew, I I definitely suggest that if you ever get a, a Vita again. You get this game, and you you get the uh, limited edition because it is definitely worth it. Uh, but the game oh, itself, I'm get a again. yeah, the game oh, itself is, is really the, <laughs> the game itself is is really awesome. I think it's uh, modeled after Ease Four. Uh, it's mm. an updated version of that, uh, but it's essentially an action RPG uh, where uh, the uh, the the series protagonist Adol Christian uh, has lost his memory. And he has to venture into uh, the uh, forest of Salsetta to try to kind of uh, learn or you know kind of uh, regain his memory. Uh, so it's almost uh, it's it's not like a, a a sequel. It's not you know expanding the universe so much as far as it's kind of bringing an older game into uh, you know kind of the current uh, video game like technology and things like that. But I'm having a lot of fun with it. Uh, I, I really do enjoy it. Uh, Ease has, is a series that I, I felt I feel bad for not having played it throughout my younger years as a game player uh, because I mean it, it was released uh, originally in North America on the Master System and then you know uh, you know other systems thereafter like you know the Turbo Graphics and things like that. So my whole thing now is going back and trying to get all these games and and replay them because I feel like a huge missed opportunity. It, you know, like, I, I need to do this. So, if anyone hasn't played Ease, definitely pick up this game. If you have a Vita, everyone who has a Vita knows there's not a lot of RPGs out there. There's Persona 4 Golden, a few other things, and uh, Ease Memory of Sasada has just most recently been released. Definitely check it out. It's a great game. Yeah, that's, I don't want to pick that up. And so that looks now, great. Graham, uh, we need to figure out how we're going to uh, give these uh, codes away oh, yeah. for these uh, these three D games. We have Super Hang On and uh, Space Harrier. You had a good idea earlier in the week. I can't remember what it was now. That's the problem. <laughs> I was thinking about it. I was thinking about it earlier when you told us. I was like, "What the hell did we say earlier?" Um, can you remember what it was? No, this is your idea, Graham. Bloody hell! Oh God. Um, what did we say? Did we, did actually, we came up with an idea earlier this week, and then I literally forgot exactly what it was. Was, was it? it a Photoshop contest where people put dresses on you? That sounds good. Okay, let's do, do that. that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm trying to go or, through our Facebook uh, messages really quick. Oh, yeah. 
yeah, because it was on Facebook we were talking about it. In the meantime, while you're doing that, we had a, just a, a, a couple of comments have come from on Twitter. Um, at Big Dipper Art said, um, one thought came to mind while watching about Sega's mistake and lack of games in holidays. Sega Sammy screwed up the good old Sega, um, which I guess some people could argue is true. Because uh, it does seem since, Sega, since they merged with Sega Sammy, things have gone a little bit iffy, but yeah. Um, also, they do really focus on their pachinko business a lot, because it's a real money draw. Yeah, it's true. So, <laughs> I, can, I, do, I do somewhat agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and another random uh, another comment from earlier, that, uh, well, talking back to earlier, was uh, at ShadowFax1804. Uh, um, he basically said, or... Oh, um, at Imran Yusuf, um, our great guest on earlier, uh, awesome chat on the Sega, on the Sega Nerds. Um, bring on Shenmue Three, woo! Um, yeah, yeah. So we we concur. <laughs> our good buddy uh, uh, Kopke just wrote in and said, "Indeed, ease are awesome of the few RPG titles I'd like to play." Awesome. And get just to let everyone like, know, you're going to be before, seeing. Get it on. Yes, and uh, just let everyone know that you're going to be seeing a uh, a little bit more of uh, Kopke's work here in the next oh, yeah. few weeks. We, we're not going to say what it is. We have excited. some exciting stuff in store. Yeah. It's, it's going to be. We're really excited. So oh, um, it's so good. We have some, <laughs> definitely some stuff uh, planned for that. Uh, here is Graham's major idea. Uh, now, oh, no, what was it? Uh, he wrote in, and this is what he messaged me on Facebook. Oh no, I don't see anything. Oh no. And we have to get them to give us a reason why they want it. <laughs> that was his idea. Is that of, what of, of of his content. Is that what he said? Oh, God. God Did damn it, just... <laughs> That was Graham's idea for the contest. <laughs> <laughs> because by um, definition, when the person that wins... Wins goes. Uh, their their answer to that would be because I want it. <laughs> <laughs> Some of it. There's something else. That was on the back of something else, I'm sure. <laughs> oh my god. Oh Jesus. Okay. So all right, Graham. It is up to you to give these codes away. The now these codes are only for North America. Uh, that's one of the things. Yeah. Um, it's they're only going to be good for North America. We have two codes for uh, uh, Hang On and uh, Space Harrier. Two codes of each game. Right. So, right? so I think yeah. um, maybe we'll have four winners. Uh, just give one code to each person. Um, Graham, what do you think? Should we just do something very simple? Just have people retweet uh, the link uh, to the Nerdcast when we put, post it out? What do you think? Uh, yeah, we could do that. Sounds good. <laughs> it's, it's very simple. Very... Or just tell us why you want it. Yeah. You can do that too. That's a great. That's a great idea. Chris. Yeah. So they, they have to. They have to choose either uh, Super Hang On or Space Hair, and they've got to tell us why they want it. Email yeah. to Segadurds at gmail dot com, and it's not. It, it won't be a random. It's going to be who. If you tell us why you want the game, and it's an awesome reason, we'll give you the yeah. game. Yeah. Yeah. Please don't just say because I want it. Yeah. <laughs> because you're not going to get it. <laughs> get like a hundred of those in. Mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, that's that's perfect. There you go. We'll tweet out. We can tweet out like that again. Like we'll do it via email though. Like send it send it in via email. Uh, yeah, brilliant. Simple. And Graham, uh, you're fired from giveaways. Also, <laughs> fantastic. Excellent. <Good. laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> All right, Sorry, guys. man. I just oh. <laughs> yeah, I hate you. Um, yeah. I think that's probably going to do it uh, for this week. Uh, as always, uh, follow us on Twitter. It's at Siginer. You can uh, follow all the all the great content that we're writing uh, at uh, Siginerds.com. Uh, Twitter, or I'm sorry, Facebook, Facebook.com slash the Siginerds, and YouTube.com slash Siginerds. I think that's uh, pretty much covered it, right? Yeah. I think so, yeah. And also go out yeah. and watch some stuff uh, from uh, Imran. Yeah. Get, dude's yeah, famous. his comedy's really, really funny, so yeah. check him out. Yeah, and so uh, if you're in the UK, um, he was on Michael McIntyre's Comedy Roadshow, uh, which is a brilliant show. And he's really good on that. Um, that was he was on that. I think it was a year or two ago now, but it's you can get that on YouTube or it's on Netflix as well because I watched it on Netflix recently. And yeah, he's fantastic. I think he's brilliant. 
You know, one of the things that I have to say about Imran is that he is a legit gamer. You could sell by talking to him. One of the yeah. things that I hate the most is, you know, like, in a lot of, like, pop culture, it's cool to act like you're a gamer. It's cool to say you play video games now, which is so weird because it was so not that when we were kids. <laughs> but now it seems like it's cool. It's the cool thing to do. So everyone says they're a gamer, right? But with Imran... And it makes for some really awkward social interactions, because it's like, <laughs> oh, I'm going to tell you all about my video game collection now, and then people are just like, you're a freak! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, if you see all of this stuff, like, most people that try to say they play, you know, video games don't know what half of these systems are and everything that we have, mm. but Imran is a legit gamer, he, you know, he is a, you know, he is passionate about Shinmu and Sega, so... You know, we've got to support that, you know what I mean? Like, go watch his stuff, go to his shows, you know, buy his DVDs, or, you know, or whatever. Just, you know, I, you know, I, I don't know. I, I, I really appreciate what he's doing out there. And he doesn't have to go out and spend time promoting Shinmu. I mean, he's got, you know, a, a career in comedy that he could be focusing on. He does not have to be doing all this other stuff on the side to help us promote Shinmu. Yet he's doing it. So I think we could at least, you know, follow him and, you know, just watch his stuff and appreciate it and, you know, and, and promote him as much as we can as well, right? Hell yeah. That's Hell cool. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that is going to do it for this week. So everyone, as it. always, stay cool and, you know, go out and play some Sega games. Let us know what you're playing. Oh, yeah. Happy yes. holidays, bitches. <laughs> Stay frosty. Happy Thanksgiving. Oh, I missed it. Uh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right. See you later. Stay up.